Exporting is an area that we as astrophotographers generally don't give enough thought to, but it matters. How we export images affects both their color fidelity as well as the sharpness within images. The internet, for example, uses the sRGB color space, a somewhat limited color space, but not that limited, it has over 16 million colors, as a standard. And if we export images that are intended for display online, such as a site like Astrobin, without keeping in mind the sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 standard, the colors within our image may be skewed. However, many monitors are capable of a much wider color space. It's very common for monitors these days to cover the Adobe RGB or Display P3 color spaces, and they both cover a significant amount more of the visible range of color. If we export to the internet with those color spaces, persons viewing our images by way of the internet and using other monitors may or may not perceive some color skewing. However, in my experience, as long as a person is using a modern, more capable monitor, a monitor with 10-bit color that operates in Depth P3 or Adobe RGB, and as long as the monitor is reasonably color calibrated, they should be fine. On top of that, there's only so much that we can do though to maintain color fidelity, because color perception, as well as things like dynamic range, as well as sharpness, will be strongly affected by the monitor a person is viewing our images from. As a basic example, a person looking at one of your images on a 1080p iPad monitor will perceive colors and sharpness quite differently from a person looking at one of your images by way of a 1440p gaming monitor and a person looking at your image with a 4K color calibrated photo editing monitor will perceive something yet again different. Essentially, as resolution and color fidelity of the viewing platform go up, the viewer will perceive something more closely approximating what you created. But exporting for color standards helps to minimize the differences that will be perceived. In addition to color accuracy, how we export will also affect the sharpness presented in an image. The effect generally is quite subtle, and with 1080p, I doubt you could see it at all. With a 4K resolution monitor, it's more obvious. And with a higher resolution monitor, like an 8K monitor, it is more obvious still. But just as the internet restricts color ranges to the sRGB color space, in general, the internet also limits the resolution of an image. So sharpness that is retained by better exporting strategies may not be perceived when viewing images over the internet, even when using high fidelity sites like Astrobin. Nonetheless, you should know how to export your images to retain the best quality. Part of the reason is that when you share your images online, you can take steps to make sure that the colors perceived by others are as close as possible to the colors you saw when you edited your images. You can't help what monitor they might be looking at your images on, but you can make sure that your images are shared using universal color standards that will help the viewer's monitor get as close as possible to what you were working with. And if you're actually going to share files with others, either just congenially as friends, or perhaps you're sending images to publishers, or especially if you're sending files to a high quality, high fidelity print shop, you're going to want to make the best possible exports. So it's a good idea to know how to accomplish that. You also want to be able to export your images with maximum fidelity in case of future editing. The more color and sharpness fidelity you retain, the more information you have to work with in potential edits down the line. Now there are a variety of ways to export for sharpness and color fidelity, and I don't see the purpose in covering them all. Some of them are outdated, some of them just aren't that good. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the best strategies to maintain color and sharpness fidelity when you export. Be aware though that YouTube video compression tends to crush the dark areas and reduce overall image resolution fidelity. So within the videos, you may not be able to see the subtle differences. I have exported numerous sample images to Astro Bin where you can get a better look at things. The link is provided below the description. However, Astro Bin is a website, so its own ability to relay both resolution and color fidelity is also limited. But you'll get a better portrayal of the images on Astro Bin than you would over YouTube. This is one of the more recent images I've created. The product of shooting in LRGB with the SET and Player One Ares M camera and representing a total of 14 hours of integration on the Tadpole Nebula. As this image is so busy and offers so much in the way of color range as well as fine and coarse structure, I think it's ideal to use as an example for this video. Let's start by first discussing preparation for exporting. And just a heads up, while there are many image formats you could use, I'm only going to cover two of the most common and important for astrophotographers, JPEGs and TIFFs. JPEGs because they allow for a lot of compression, making images quite small, and TIFFs because it's a lossless format. Whether TIFFs are compressed or uncompressed, they do not lose information. 
Tips are sometimes compressed to allow them to be a little smaller for archiving, though it takes a little longer to open them as well. Storage being as cheap as it is these days, when I work with TIFFs, I never bother to compress them. Let's begin by looking at some best practices for exporting JPEGs. Once you have your final image ready to export, you would simply go to the File drop-down menu and go down to Export and click on it. The export window that will open has a lot of options. And each of the options have detailed and complicated theory behind them, so you won't find concise answers on best practices anywhere on the internet that I know of. You will find some explanations, but those explanations lead down rabbit hole after rabbit hole of yet more explanations. In the Affinity Photo Export window, you pick your file format right here in the circled area. You'll notice below that, there is an area that says Presets and it says JPEG Best Quality. It refers to the resample mode and what is best quality is case dependent. If you're going to leave the images at the original size, in my experience, it makes only a very little difference which resample method you use. There is a slight sharpness difference, but you'd have to be kind of a pixel peeper to see it. However, in my experience and through some experimentation, I have found that in most editing situations, you will get the best and sharpest results with the Lanxos 3 algorithm. The algorithm works very well and provides great results when upscaling an image and even manages to give good outcomes when downscaling by as much as 50%. So, since it's excellent for a bit of downscaling or considerable upscaling, I'll save them in Lengso's 3 as a default. If you're going to downscale quite a bit though, you will probably find Lengso's gives oversharp and jagged looking results. This can lead to aliasing, with images looking like they have wave-like structures within them, and lines, especially diagonals, looking jagged. I find the bicubic algorithm avoids this and gives excellent results down to 1 6th the image's original size. Let's move on to the ICC Profile drop-down menu. There are a lot of options here and each one would require a book of explanation, so we'll stick with the most important. The bottom option, sRGB Display Profile with Display Hardware Configuration Data Derived from Calibration, is the best option for you to view your images in sRGB on your monitor, but it's not the best option to work with nor export from. Because, while it will show you the most color-balanced image on your monitor, that image will be balanced according to your monitor's known quirks and predilections. Every monitor has certain quirks and predilections. Some monitors are, show images a little cooler. Some monitors may emphasize warmer colors. Some monitors might show the brightness of certain colors better than others. But if you export to this profile, it's only going to work best with your model of monitor and for others who have it. Above that, you'll see a profile called sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? but that is the most commonly used universal color profile. And it is the standard for the internet. And these days, most every monitor can show the entire sRGB color range without problems. That doesn't account for how some monitors may skew colors or emphasize warm colors or cool colors or whatnot, but nonetheless, almost every monitor these days can show the entire sRGB color range. This is a color range that was developed mm, some 30 years ago, so it's old tech. And it's not that limited either, it does have over 16 million colors. In most cases, you will not really feel all that limited using this color space. If you choose to export in the sRGB color space, the colors of your images will generally be faithfully reproduced by the monitors, disregarding those monitors' personal quirks and biases, of course. And you should be aware that the internet is generally configured for the use of the sRGB color space. So, using the sRGB is the safest way to have the best color fidelity reproduced if you share your images online, even if using high fidelity sites like Astrobin. However, sRGB is old tech, dating back to when monitors had 8-bit color. Many monitors these days have 10-bit color, offering billions of potential colors. And so, over the last couple decades, we have seen the rise of much more complete color ranges. There was Adobe RGB, which began all the way back in 1998. And a bit later, Display P3 began to appear. Adobe RGB tends to emphasize slightly warmer colors, and Display P3 gives more bright greens and deep reds. And of these two, Display P3 seems to be becoming the predominant color space, since it's considered a bit better for video. Many modern phones and tablets and even computer monitors are configured especially for the Display P3 color space. My own 4K BenQ computer monitor that I use for photo and video editing is also calibrated for the Display P3 color space. It's not so much that it's better than Adobe RGB, in truth, they're probably about equal quality. It's just that it's the rising star, so to speak. In any event, I have found that, in general, even when displaying images on the internet, 
You would be hard pressed to see a visual difference in the colors between an image exported in sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Display P3, and many professional photographers to this very day work in sRGB. And that's because sRGB offers 16.77 million colors, and that's enough to make almost any image well. On the other hand, there is definite reason to go to Adobe RGB or Display P3 if you can. In particular, Display P3 will give you brighter greens and deeper reds. But in actual practice with modern monitors, even over the internet, most any of these color spaces work fine. I've tested this with exports to Astrobin, and all the exports end up looking good. Though the image that was exported in sRGB may show greens and especially blues a little bit, and I do mean just a little bit, oversaturated or over rich. It truly is almost unnoticeable unless you're virtually pixel peeping. And it simply results from that sRGB can't quite display the full tonal range that display P3 can. Now, when you might particularly want to use sRGB is if you're exporting for persons using older monitors. But I can absolutely guarantee you, even if you export an sRGB, you're probably occasionally going to hear from somebody who says that your image has too much saturation or too little saturation, or it's too cool or too warm, too much blue, too much red, something like that. But if most people like the image and you only hear this from the odd person, that typically means that's a quirk with their particular monitor and there's nothing you can do about it. They need to update their monitor, the driver, calibrate the monitor, or maybe get a new monitor or device. Let's switch to the TIFF menu, which offers a couple other options. Remember that JPEG allows for smaller images at the cost of a very slight bit of data loss. While TIFF is a lossless format and will retain 100% of your information, even if compressed, but at the expense of considerably larger files. Though I have to be honest, you'd have to be the pixelist of pixel peepers to see the difference between a file saved in JPEG versus TIFF. Though I also admit that I always save my images as lossless TIFFs. In most ways, the TIFF options are the same. In the file settings section, choose a resample algorithm. And with TIFFs, just as with JPEGs, I'll default to the Linksos 3 algorithm. However, if I'm going to downsize by more than 50%, I'll default to the bicubic. In pixel format, choose RGB 16. That provides the full range of color that's available in today's color spaces. And then in the ICC profile, you once again choose what color profile you want to go with. And there you would typically choose between sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 or Adobe RGB or Display P3. At the bottom of the TIFF export window, you'll see an option for compression. In Affinity Photo, you may choose No Compression, LZW Compression, or Zip Compression. With TIFF files, if you compress them, they still remain lossless, but it may take longer to open them. For myself, whenever I work with TIFF files, I just leave them uncompressed, as I mentioned earlier. You can create presets for your preferred export methods. Just go up to the Preset drop-down window and look on the right. Click on the group of small horizontal lines to the right of the drop-down menu. And there you'll be presented with three options. Create a preset based on whatever settings you currently have selected. Rename an already existing preset or delete an already existing preset. All right, let's take a quick look at how different exporting strategies can affect your images. Shown now is an image I recently created of the Tadpole Nebula. And as you can see, the one on the left was exported using the bilinear algorithm and the sRGB color space. And the one on the right was exported using the Lanxos algorithm and the display P3 color space. Let's consider color spaces first. Due to the limitations of YouTube and your monitor, you may or may not be able to see a color difference between these two images. I've also placed both these images on Astrobin so you can see much higher resolution versions. And even there, due to internet limitations, they're still likely to look pretty much the same. Now I've also made these files downloadable so that you can take a look at them. You'll find the links in the description. And if you choose to download them and look at them, and presuming that you have a display P3 capable monitor, what you'll find is that the display P3 image presents darker green-blue regions and the darker regions of space, which is true to the original edit. And as we move to the right of the image, the color transition from dark blue-green to pale is more complete and shows more detail. This is the result of the wider display P3 color space being able to relate more information. However, and unfortunately, the wider color spaces really are only going to be able to show their the beautiful range and accuracy if you are sharing files or sending images for printing. As the internet currently stands, most likely you'll lose it. But likewise, generally you don't have to worry all that much whether you are exporting in the sRGB, Display P3, or Adobe RGB color spaces, 
because astrophotography images are generally going to show up okay. Now let's take a look at how resampling algorithms can affect an image's sharpness. The differences are very subtle, but important. I find that exporting with the Lengsos 3 algorithm resolves better detail even if the images are not resized. To really see this though, you have to look very closely because it shows up best in the very fine detail. To illustrate, let's take a look at this very fine structure, such as the dark cloud material here within the Tadpole Nebula. The differences in sharpness can be seen in the cloud structures and also between stars that are very close to each other. For example, in the heart of the lower tadpole here, in the bilinear image, you can clearly see that there are two stars, but in the Lengsos image, the two stars are subtly but distinctly more defined as separate. Due to the limitations of internet presentation, you may barely be able to see the difference at all. It's much more obvious working with the full resolution original images. So if you want to see it, be sure to download those files. You'll have to zoom in close and do a little pixel peeping, but it's there. Your average viewer, though, honestly, is never going to notice it. But I think that's great. Technology has progressed to the point where most of this esoteric and mysterious exporting stuff works pretty well. So, if you're only going to present on the internet, you might think that this video is fairly pointless and you might as well keep exporting in default bilinear and sRGB. And that would be completely fine. For my part, I like to resolve as much detail and have the colors be as accurate to the original edits as possible so that it can use the images in the most number of ways. Because one never knows just what one might be doing with an image down the line. I hope that helps you to improve your ability to do astrophotography and that you found this video beneficial and learned something from it. I know I learned something from it in the creation of it because, honestly, up until I had cause to look at it fairly recently, I had never given all that much thought to exportation of images. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.